Good evening. How's everybody doing tonight? Guess we won't be drinking a lot. Well, Linda said all those nice things about me. Most of them aren't true, by the way. But this is the only group that I actually like getting invited back to. Because, see, it's one thing to get invited once, but it's another thing when you get invited back. That either means that, that people like what you do or they ran out of people to ask. All right, so tonight we're going to do this great topic. Everyone is jolly and ho, 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 and you are doing how? That's what we're doing tonight. Now, I, I'd like to also say that I'm the first presenter in the last three months that's actually shown up. <laughs> <laughs> and, and my original thought was that I was going to play a practical joke on Linda and send her an email saying that I was going to cancel but I thought that was really a bad idea, so I didn't, think, so I didn't think I was going to do that. And then uh, today I had the idea that I was going to call her up and say, you know, I can't come because of... I thought that was a really bad idea, too, so I didn't do that either. <laughs> I didn't think anybody could handle that, so I decided not to do that. So I decided to actually show up. No, so I think everybody got the handouts, which is the two-page thing. Oh. They're in the back. What are my handouts? Got the handouts. Right, so you can even see that even Santa has a hard time that this this time of year. As he's lying on the couch saying, you know, this is really tough. The pressure's on. Here is the thirteenth of December, 12 great shopping days to go before that great magical holiday that drives everybody crazy. And of course, if you're Jewish, you only got a handful of days to go until Friday night, so you know, you better get those shopping done, but of course you've got eight days to do it, so you know, you get a little break in the action. So when I was thinking about coming here in December, you know, one of the things that came to be, me was, boy, you know, holiday times is a tough time for lots of people. Lots of people. And if you're prone to having depression, bipolar, whatnot, I think it's a harder time. So when you're looking at the calendar, you know, and you said, oh boy, you know, here we are. Anybody have any reactions as they turn the page, you know, is on, the, on the calendar, I have a big wall calendar, and turn the page from November to December? Anybody have any thoughts about, about the holidays in terms of reactions, in terms of negative or positive? Anybody? Yes. Right. Because I think a lot of times when people look at the holidays, they say, oh boy, everybody is jolly and ho, 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 yeah, and here I am, I'm just going to see if I can find a way to get through the day. Anybody relate to that? Good, I'm in the right place, just want to check. And so... There's some other things that come by because, I mean, for, when you start thinking about holiday depression, getting through the holidays, you think about all the great things that lots of people go and it's, you know, peace and joy and to man and this is good and it's the season of blah, 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 blah. And if you're fortunate to have your radio on all day long at work, what do you have? Nothing but Christmas songs. And you try to change the station on the radio, and what do you get? Nothing but Christmas songs. And some of those Christmas songs, if you tend to be leaning on the mood, depressed side, don't exactly make you want to start singing. I'm like, all right, I get it. I'm supposed to be happy. Something's wrong. I'm not. We have the radio on all day long at work, and we have this little internal battle between the station that has the Christmas music all the time and me wanting to have anything else but Christmas music on. 
So it's kind of like, you know, in between people, like, can we change the station, please? It's probably be crazy. Like, okay. So tonight we're going to focus in on holiday depression, looking at maintaining wellness throughout the holiday season, hopefully identifying strategies to make that happen. And the goal is to see if we can make these days more tolerable than others. By the way, just want to help you guys out here. If I do all the talking, this will be the least popular tape in the tape library. <laughs> this will be the one that Mark's going to take and throw against the wall. So you got to help me out. All right. So, so besides, we're going to separate out. We're going to say, okay, we have mood disorder and over here. We're going to go over here. What do you think causes holiday depression? What are, th what are some things? Yes. One thing is the lack of light at this time of year. You got it. And another thing is being thrown back with your family often where it can stir up old problems. You are right on my notes. <laughs> right? Two things. Let's, 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 do, let's cover both of those. That's really good. We'll do that and then we'll, go, then we'll get to some other folks. We'll do the family one later because that one's much more exciting. There is a study at it, and I don't know if you know this because I brought the copy of the article. It's the study done in Canada about uh, light therapy as compared to Prozac. And these folks, this is from the American Journal of Psychiatry 2006. They did a fancy dancy study compared Prozac and the light box for people that have the good seasonal affective disorder. Light box one. First randomized controlled study that actually showed that as compared to something, the light box is better. So I happen to have that with me if anybody wants to take a peek at that or want to. And, and the people who, who did the study are also selling what they use for the study. And it's, about, and it's under 200 bucks, which is pretty amazing as you consider the cost of Prozac. So be that as it may. Yes. So this time of year, and we've been blessed by the way. 50 degrees, December 13th, we are blessed. We've had sunny days. We've had a handful of those gray, dark days that make us think of winter. Last week, yeah. Last Friday, last Saturday, dark, cold, dingy, yeah. Hide under the covers, yeah. This week, not so bad. We've been blessed. I'm the worst one. <laughs> Somebody from our group who moved to California finds that the, in Southern California, the light really makes a difference mm -hmm, for her. Mm -hmm. So much so that when her um, children are relocating and would like her to join them, she wants to check out the light before she does. Absolutely. Right, so there's a lot to that. Okay, so family stuff, lack of light. Yes, what else in the back? Holiday depression. Yes. My son committed suicide five years ago, shortly after Christmas. Yes. So this is a time of year that I start getting a little bit insane. Yep, absolutely. And the stuff gets stirred up and stirred up and stirred up. And, and that's so for all kinds of losses. Let me come, let's, I don't want to minimize yours because, yes, it's definitely painful. All losses, whether it be the loss of a of a family member, loss of friend, or separation, divorce, all losses get stirred up. Because the interesting thing about holidays is that it's easy to superimpose this year, last year. This year, for you, five years ago. This year, it's easy to do easy marking place. You can do Thanksgiving. What are we doing last Thanksgiving? We're going to do two things. It's easy to do that. This time of year, really easy to do that. And so that brings back all the feelings. So there's a lot of loss, a lot of sadness, a lot of grief. All that stuff gets kicked back up. Good. Other people? Anybody else? We've got family stuff getting Yes, sir. You just want to read my notes? I just, I just go home. They're so close together. Mm -hmm. It used to be very difficult for me when I tried to get home for both a month right. apart. You mean the Thanksgiving, yeah. Christmas, 
come by Barton. The government was thinking of moving Thanksgiving up, but not yet. <laughs> I think they should move Thanksgiving to the summer. I mean, this is... It's okay, because then we could have turkey outside. How great would that be? Anyway, um, right? So we got family stuff. We got loss and grief, right? We have the lack of light, right? We also have this time as a really stressful time. And combined with the commercialism, if you will, of the holiday, and everybody having these expectations about how they're supposed to be, you know, there's a ton of stress. You know, you don't have to, you just need to open up one newspaper to find out who's having their special sale and opening up at God knows what hour so that you can get that extra shopping in to get that great bargain to tell you what you're missing out on. That is if you decide to go out to the store. All that stuff. On top of that, in addition to all the shopping, there's, okay, all the spending. Where's the money coming from? And then there's just the ah, fatigue part. There's just so much. So much. It's like, ah. you know, my reaction today on the 13th of December is, oh boy, in 12 days, all this nonsense will be over. And something close to normal, whatever that is, will come back. And we're not going to hear about this, and the Christmas songs will be gone, and then, because New Year's, although the next holiday on the agenda, and carries with it its own kind of thing, does not carry all of this stuff. The New Year's like, New Year's! We're going to celebrate the New Year. Okay. Great fun. But it doesn't have all this other stuff in there. There is all, and, and, and let's go back, and, and another one of the key variables is the expectation because everybody has them. Whether there are expectations of family members, whether there are expectations of, you know, how it's supposed to be, whether there's expectations, there's always that expectation. We tie back in family and, you know, how that's going to be and everybody has an idea of how this is going to be and you're going to do this and you're going to do that, blah, 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 and the civil war that's going to happen as a result of not going to so-and-so and so-and-so and, -so, and this one's going to be upset and how could you not do that and this one's going to be upset and blah, 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 and I don't feel like going anywhere. So I don't care what anybody thinks, I just stay home, et cetera, et cetera. Add to that, let's kind of bring it back in, that if we tie back in the lack of light and the tendency for people this time of year with stress and pressure and whatnot to have their moods not be as good as you'd want them to be, that creates all kinds of other problems. Because again, you know, we like stability. Stability is good. It's a good thing to not be real depressed, not be romantic. We like stability, but with all this other stuff going on, it may not be possible. Let me add a couple other things. Because of the nature of this time of year, people also do things that they don't regularly do. People have on their agenda holiday parties to go to. Anybody? Holiday parties they're going to? Well, right? Right? What happens at holiday parties? Lots of eating, lots of drinking, right? If you're prone towards depression, towards bipolar, and you don't eat good things, your mood gets funky. Worse, if you're prone to having the mood thing and you drink on the medication or drink too much, your mood gets real funky. So that creates the instability, that creates all the problems, and we add in the external stuff, and, that's, and that becomes the other thing. Add to that overeating, overspending, add to that difficulty sleeping related to a whole bunch of other things, and what you got is a lot of mess, a lot of stress, and lots and lots of stuff. Interestingly enough, we talk about holiday depression, so we think about, okay, Hanukkah, Christmas, Kwanzaa, blah, 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 New Year's, and then comes the Big Bang after New Year's. Because there is the big letdown. The proverbial, is that all there is? Oh, it's another year. And here we go again. We do it all over again. 
So post January 1st becomes a whole nother ball game. Some people will go as far to say, and this goes back to about moving the holidays, that that whole stressful period goes until after Super Bowl Sunday. And now that they move Super Bowl Sunday back another month, that's a whole nother stretch. Now the Super Bowl's in February. February 8th, I believe? Fourth? Fourth? Right. It gets later and later. They'll be playing the Super Bowl in you know, March next year. Right? I mean, so now they've extended holiday period from Thanksgiving to after the Super Bowl. And now it's February. That's a stressful period. Other thing to pay attention to is that, okay, we have increased needing, increase in drinking, we have spending, lots of spending, lots of credit cards, lots of debt. It's easy this time of year to be prone to what I call the quick fix. I feel crappy, I'm going to eat something. I feel crappy, I'm going to drink something. I feel crappy, I'm going shopping. Woohoo! Here comes my plastic, bing, bing, up. Because it's okay, you know, it's, real, it's literally buy now, pay later. Except when pay later is not payable. Yes? Yes? Highly addictive stuff. Can't beat it. Right? Because the best part of eBay, I want this, I buy. Always there. Thing to it. Yeah. Brings up, if, if you have a tendency towards that behavior, sure, you know, you've got that competition going. I don't want to lose this. I want to beat this. My brain goes out the window. You know, I'm bidding $50 or something that costs 20 Right. And now I just lost $50. Now what am I going to do? Okay, let me blah, 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 da, da, da. Yeah, absolutely. Quick fix stuff all, all over the place. Very easy to do. Very easy to fall into the trap very easy to, to get stuck in that, overeating, overdrinking, overspending, shopping, all this good quick fix stuff. Any thoughts, any comments, any anything about anything that I've said so far? Don't hit me. Usually, I spend you know a lot of attention to picking out my year's calendar for the kitchen, you know, one week at a time with a picture. And this year, I just didn't get to do it, and I decided to try online. Now, I took a little bit of a risk because I don't know what's in the calendar, mm -hmm. but the cover was so gorgeous that I am thrilled. Couldn't resist. <laughs> and hopefully, I'll still be happy with it. Yeah. I had a question. When uh, light therapy first started, and for a while beyond that, um, they used to believe it was necessary to be pre-dawn light. Is that still the case? I have no idea. I'll give you a solid I don't know. My knowledge of, of, of the whole seasonal effect of the thing is, if you have it, get outside. I mean, that's, that's, my, that's, that's my great knowledge. And so that's good when you can get outside. But this study that came out is really the first study that's actually said this stuff works. And in fact, it works better than Prozac. First thing I've ever seen. Because for years it's been, this stuff works, we think. I, this stuff. Yeah. But I mean, right. But, but, this, but what's groundbreaking about it is that this is the first thing that's actually proven that this stuff actually works, as opposed to kind of, you know, if you get under the lights, it's, it's good for you. You know, you get outside, it's good for you, okay? They've actually done a research study and published in a major journal, not you know the journal of you know I made it up myself. Um, that says this stuff works. That's pretty good. Other thoughts or comments about all this you know causes of holiday stuff and causes of holiday depression and, and whatnot? No running around for you. Okay, so let's kind of let's kind of think about we know we know what the problem is. Let's think about what we can do about it. Um, what kinds of things make this better? In my best Monty Python thinking, and now for something completely different, let's think about a different way to do the holidays. So I'm going to get shot now by all the traditionalists. So I just want to mention that because I'm not a traditionalist. 
my thinking about this is, okay, let's, let's get out of the why do we do what we do every single year thing. Tradition. Why do we do it? And let's think about what do you do? What's the consequences of not doing it? Translation. Is it necessary to buy everybody under the sun gifts? Is that really necessary? Is it necessary to go, go crazy and spend money and money and money and money that you don't have for the purpose of doing the gifts? And by the way, why do we give gifts anyway? What's the purpose of this? It seems to me that part of the expectation is, okay, you know, we got to do, 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 we got to do. My question is, why? Did I miss the email that said, you know, we must do this because of the file? I must have missed that one because I didn't get it. Didn't come to my inbox. I say, why? Why are we doing this? Is this the only possible way that we can say to the people who we love and care about, oh, you're really special to me? We gotta do it once? So, so, okay, so 364 days a year I can be a jerk, but if I deliver on day 365, I'm made up now. That's what we're saying? Yes? I've always looked at it as a form of mass psychological hypomania. English, please? Because I love what you're saying, but I... Hypomania. I got that part. Mass hypomania. Like everybody's just crazy? Yeah. Yeah, okay. I do it much better in simple. Right, but I mean, to me, it's like, why are we doing this? What's the purpose here? And why does it have to be this day? Or these days, depending on choice power. Why? You know, I mean... You know, I mean, there, if you separate out the religious connotations from the commercial, I mean, why? And is there a better way to do this? Is there a better way than to have, you know, you know, this with this relative, and this with this relative, and this with this relative, and this? Is there a better way to do that? Once we don't see these people all year long, and we're gonna we're gonna max out and see everybody, you know, on one day. I don't sound a tad stressful. Tad. Right? So I'm, I'm, not, I'm raising questions. I'm not posing solutions, but I'm saying, why are we doing this? Is there a way, because I want to go back to what you said before about family, is there a way to create new rituals, new ideas, new things that work better, that are more meaningful? I joke all the time, somewhat tongue-in-cheek, that my fantasy of the perfect Thanksgiving is the come as you are, we're getting pizza, and we're hanging out. You want to come? This is what we're doing. I've gotten vetoed every year, by the way, for this idea, my family. But I did hear from one of my clients that she was driving past someone and saw pizza getting delivered to somebody's house. And he said, these people, these people, these people got it. It's like, okay, we got Thanksgiving, got all this stuff. Why? I want to, I want to, if I'm hanging out with my family, I want to hang out with my family. I don't want a big, elaborate thing. So I'm saying, hey, let's think about what we're doing and why we're doing it. And if we're doing these holidays, gee, is there a different way we can do this? Is there a better, less stressful way to do this rather than do the same old, same old, same old, the reason we do it is because we do it. Well, yes, you could definitely start a new tradition. If you can afford it, you can go out for dinner or at least get part of your dinner made or delivered. You know. Right, or decide. There's a, there's a couple that I see. The woman's pregnant. And so we're using the pregnancy exemption clause <laughs> to say that they this couple, are having Christmas dinner at their house. They are not traveling. She's pregnant. And people, if they would like to come, are welcome to come. And if they don't, they don't. She's pregnant, so there's an exemption. A new tradition for them. 
as opposed to going to his family, her family, this family in the morning, this family afternoon, this family Christmas Eve, this crap, blah, 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 tradition. And stressing themselves out so no one enjoys anything because they have to deal with crazy families, of which they both have crazy families, <laughs> and they have to battle out and deal with her stress and his stress and then the stress that they have put out of each other from dealing with his stress and her stress. Totally missing the point. Yes, in the back, we have to pass the microphone. It's interesting your comment on pizza at Thanksgiving because my mom is 80 and she always feels that she has to go through this tremendous preparation for Thanksgiving and she's getting old and she gets really stressed out to the point of almost a breakdown. I mean, really. And, and that process, there's, there's, there's a thing in therapy which is called an anniversary reaction. Give you a little technical piece here. Anniversary reaction is exactly what we're talking about, just so we can give it a label. It's that feeling, it's that reaction that comes up at the same time of the year at that or a certain anniversary that remembers a big event, some type of loss, some type of sadness, some type of trauma, unfortunately, and for some people, and it brings all that up. The holidays are built-in anniversary reactions. Um, getting on to what Mark said, one time not that long ago, he was telling friends of ours how he must, he really missed his um, holiday, you know, Christmas at his aunts and grandmothers and so on. So they invited him, us, to their Christmas party dinner, which was extremely nice, but it wasn't his family's. Right. <laughs> but it, it was a nice gesture anyway. Mm -hmm. Hold on, hold on. Mark's got to run. See, this is Mark's aerobic workout. This is part of how you get better with depression. You carry the microphone around. Just an odd way of, of kind of breaking it and having a break on the day was going down to the soup kitchen and helping out. Absolutely. Right? I'll say it again. Soup kitchen. Oh. Right? You know, that is an excellent point. You know, because among the things that happens this time of year, is that, is that if you have a tendency towards feeling depressed, I'm going to do the depressed part, you know, here's, here's a black cloud, and everything's really bad. It's really, really, really bad, and really, really, really bad. Except for the problem is, is that there's a lot of people who have it really, really, really bad. And when you step outside of that, you begin to see, wow, gratitude is really good, and giving is really good. And so, and so there's that great built-in, I don't want to say escape, but kind of like, okay, I'm getting out of me to help somebody else. Excellent point. Somebody else? Our whole family needed a solution for Christmas because of my sister's in-law's business. Um, I called her just last night. She's so busy right now going nuts with the business. And um, anyway, both she and my brother were tired. She would be falling asleep. We being that my mother was European, we celebrated Christmas Eve. And then we had Christmas dinner the next day anyway. Um, but that, that, so now my parents are too old. My brother does, does Christmas because he has his family. Generally, I don't travel when it might be snowy or anything. And, and uh, you know, what am I going to do with sick parents, right? <laughs> um, I, you know, and I might be in their way, although I'd like, might like to go down there another time of year. Somebody else was going to say something? In the back. Yeah, I think I can speak loud. Can everybody hear me? This is for the tape. Oh, the, the tape won't hear you, though. <laughs> OK, for the record. Um, yeah, one of the things that I started doing because I do get down around the holidays is uh, the charity where I work uh, does the very first Saturday of December. They do a, a holiday party for the senior citizens. Uh -huh. And I volunteered for that, and I really enjoyed it. And then uh, 
it's become like a family tradition because mm -hmm. my dad likes to go and mm -hmm. serve all the old people. I'm like, dad. <laughs> He's probably younger than most of the people he's serving. But And my nieces and my nephews, my brother worked for the same company for a while. My nieces and my nephews come too. So out of my eight nieces and nephews, five of them already have done it. So it's like a three-generation thing. Right. So it's become a tradition right, for us. Right, building in an, a great ritual. Yeah, yeah. And, and my dad is, uh, he gets on people's nerves real easy so that is the day that my sister brings up my nieces or my nephews and decorates their house while my father's serving the old people right. <laughs> so it's it's worked out right. all so around again, for a lot for of people too he's he figures out a way to give something to those old people because he's not so it works out great behind you mark yeah, with, with me, uh, the holidays uh, offer us both good and bad. And uh, I suffer from some social anxiety and some, um, sometimes I set expectations. And I, I'm just going to this year allow myself to enjoy the holiday and the holidays. Um, it seems like I can find things to make me upset if I want to uh, or I can allow myself to try to enjoy it. And if I have that choice, which I think I do, I'm going to really, really give an effort to not let anything get me down too much. And the best part is that if you give yourself permission to have a good day, then that's half the battle. Because it's like, okay, it's okay to have a good day. It's okay to feel crappy, and it's okay to feel good. And it's okay to be out there and say, okay, yeah, I have some of these things, and, and some of these things may get me down and may not be, but I'm going to be okay with allowing myself to have a good day. Perfect. And battling through some of the social things, right, another whole factor in dealing with holidays, big crowds, big people. Absolutely. Some of the, you know, the constants in your life that you've been focusing on, focusing on that you've been exposed to for 30 or 40 or 50 years, Absolutely. they are not a surprise. So, right. you know, find a way to shut them down mm -hmm. in a very nice manner. I have found that, you know, the person who just knows, you know, how to get under my skin, the best way to shut him down is, thank you for sharing that. He doesn't know what to do with that. <laughs> there you go, right? Right, right, because there is some, you're right, there is, there is some predictability. And it's kind of like you can have the playbook ready to go. Okay, when so and so does this, I end up boom, right? To again make the day more palatable and more doable. Anybody else? Mark gets a break. If you will, put the handout that you have after Santa on the second page, actually, a real handout. The, hand, the, the, the Santa was in the newspaper the other day. I couldn't resist. It's coping with stress and depressions during the holiday. At least let's hope that's what it says. Couple of easy tips. Everybody got one? Good. Keep that up, up. Keep expectations for the holiday season manageable. Try to set realistic goals for yourself. Pace yourself, organize your time. Let's just break this down, right? Manageable goals. What do I want to do here today? You know what? Because, again, it's easy to get overwhelmed. It's easy to make this the Super Bowl of all holidays. Easy does it. Make a list and prioritize the activities. Do not put the focus in on one day. Exactly. This isn't, this not, this isn't the greatest day ever. It's a day. Right? And a lot of folks, you know, may recognize the whole one day at a time thing. Okay, and let's, let's bring that in. i got 24 hours. This is a day. This is not the day. This is a day. And if we use Christmas just because it's easier, you know, there's a day before it and there's a day after it. They're the same day. They're the same 24. It just happens to be a day, just like all the rest of them. Of 365, it's another one. It just seems to have this extra importance that people place to it, but just another day. Second one. Remember, the holiday season does not banish reasons for feeling sad or lonely. Right. There's room to have these feelings throughout. It's the permission part. I'm allowed to feel the way I do. 
There's nothing wrong with it. It's how I feel. I bought it, I own it, it's mine. It may not be the most popular, it doesn't matter. It's how I feel. It's mine. Leave yesteryear in the past and look towards the future, blah, 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 blah. Don't set yourself up for looking at the good old days. Again, we go back to the one day at a time stuff. That's past, this is future, we are here. Sign at the mall says you are here. It doesn't say you are there. It says here. We are right here, right now, in the moment. We are today, not here, not there. Because again, it's easy to do the holiday tour. Remember 20 years ago? We, yeah, okay, we can do that. And boy, you know, I hope that 20 years, no, we can, it's crazy, it's nutty. And it's, and it's a total setup for failure, depression, and sadness. Total setup. Do something for someone else by volunteering. We talked about that. Excellent, right? Enjoy activities that are free, such as driving around, looking at holiday decorations, blah, 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 blah. Make a snow person. I want to see that. I want to see the snowman. Show me. Today. Show me. Um, right? If you happen to live in a neighborhood that has amazing decorations, you know, on a random night, go for a spin. Just to see. On a random day with no decorations, go for a drive. Go back to the sun thing, go for a drive. Enjoy, embrace, go back to the gratitude thing. Enjoy what's out there. The other night, I was driving home and a deer walked across the road. Now let me note, I've never seen a deer in this road. The deer looked like it was looking for Walmart. <laughs> it was not doing what deer usually do. I'm going to jump into your car. It wasn't doing that. It, was looking, it looked like it was looking at how to get to Walmart. It was just kind of hanging out in the middle of the road, looking around. Just kind of standing there, looking for, some, looking for me to pull over, and he was looking to ask me directions. That's what it looked like. He then proceeded to hop over the fence, and that was the end of that. But again, you know, if you can avoid not hitting them, they're kind of interesting little creatures. It's all the nature stuff. It's all the gratitude. It's today. And it's a way out of all the crazy. Be aware that excessive drinking will only increase your feelings of depression. Yes. For those people that don't know this, alcohol is a central nervous system depression, depressant. If you have a tendency towards depression and you use central nervous system depression, depression, what happens? You get depressed. Film at 11. Most people think that having a drink or two makes them feel better. Well, it does. But it's a depressant. It makes you feel worse. Back to the quick fix thing. Try something new. Celebrate the holidays in a new way. Why are we doing this? Spend time with supportive and caring people. Reach out, make new friends, contact someone you've not heard in a while. Yeah. Yeah. If we're going to think about a reason to do these holiday things, what would happen if, on a, if, if a new ritual became, hey, you know, I haven't heard from so-and-so all year. I wonder how he or she is doing. Let me call him. There's a new tradition. It'd be better to speak to so-and-so regularly. Okay. But if it hasn't happened, gee, how about a new tradition? A holiday phone call to someone so that I haven't heard from all year. Let alone good support getting around people who get it, like here, who understand what holiday depression, what depression and bipolar and all that stuff is all about, and be with people who get it, and people who care, and people who understand. Last thing. Save time for yourself. Recharge your batteries. Let others share responsibility and activities. Right? If this, is, if this is a holiday time and all the messages about giving and giving and giving and helping and reaching out, that's good. Great, great. How about, how about recycle some of that? And give me a gift that I wish to give me. Something that I can do that takes care of me for the day. Whatever that may be. No matter how small, how inconsequential, 
It is. Give me the opportunity to give myself the gift. My greatest gifts that I give myself are my 15 minute nap. It's like, boom, okay, I'm good. Usually not while I'm working, though, I just want to tell people. Um, that's bad <laughs> when I'm not working. Um, so again, it's about giving, but also giving and recycling some of that giving energy and bringing it back. Any questions, any comments about any of the stuff we've talked about tonight? No questions, no comments? No sleeping on the job? <laughs> you talked about calling somebody you hadn't spoken to all year. Mm -hmm. When I first got out of the hospital from severe depression, I, I guess not right away, I called a cousin I hadn't spoken to in years and years mm -hmm. and didn't know that that was maybe a bipolar thing to do. So now I'm a very well, now you're leery of right. doing something. But, but again, if, but, but if you're at the top of your game and you know that you're stable and you know that you're balanced, and it isn't one of those, hey, I think I'll you know, go through my address book and start at A and see if I can call it before I get to L. Yeah, that's mania. Um, if I'm at the top of my game and I'm doing well and there are other people who can tell me, hey, you're doing okay today. Yeah, what about that? You know, it reminds me of the scene in A Beautiful Mind towards the end of the movie where Nash is over in the hallway and he's talking to, and he goes to the person, you're real, right? Right? <laughs> you know, and it's kind of, okay, it's the reality check. Okay, I think I'm doing okay. Let me just check out. Am I doing okay? I'm doing okay. It's my reality check. Right? So it's kind of like, yeah, if I'm, if I'm doing well, and the people who get it tell me, you're doing okay? Yeah, call that person. If I'm not doing okay, and the people around me say, you're not doing okay? Yeah, leave the phone down. That's probably, probably not a good idea, because they're probably not going to be very welcome phone calls, particularly when they don't make a whole lot of sense. I, I don't mean to correct you, but I love that scene. He turns to the student next to him and huh? says, can you see him? Okay. Because he has hallucinations. So when the student says yes, then he goes, oh, okay. And okay. then he starts talking to the guy. Good. <laughs> Thank you. Such a great movie. Fantastic. Right? Yeah. No, I have not. Absolutely. Better? Even better. Put on my reading list. And so the way they show it from his point of view, mm -hmm. when he starts digging into right. his arm to take out the chip, mm -hmm. right before that, the person's going, the chip, the chip, the chip's the proof. So it was really good that it showed that somebody could be delusional enough to harm themselves in a way that they thought they were, mm -hmm. they thought something was so real that they did something that was, Absolutely, you know, right, right. It was really good. To, right, right. So again, it's that, you know, it's, it's the reality check of, I'm doing okay, right? Because again, in my mind, I might be doing okay, but I might not be. Which is why having people around who get it, people who understand, that's my reality check. Good. Other questions? Any, uh, any other questions or comments? Okay, let me just say a couple things and we'll call tonight night. You know, one of the great things about this group is that the people who are here understand mood disorder. And so it makes an easy base to talk to about certain things. So when we talk about, you know, holiday depression, it comes with the word depression, which we don't have to define, not in this room. And so we have different versions of that for different people. And so as we advance calendar, 13th, later this week, Hanukkah, week after that, Christmas, etc., holiday season will will and can be tough times for different people in different ways. The key variable, I think, is to come up with good, useful ways for everybody, unique to self, that work to get through the holiday season, to produce healthiness and wellness, good coping, and a good definition of what a holiday season looks like for that person. Thanks for giving me the chance to talk with you folks tonight. Thank you. And thanks for all your help.